Hey everyone, Shabby here and welcome back to our next episode of the AEW Universe Mode. We are here with AEW Dynamite and tonight we have our final two qualifiers for the Elimination Chamber at Blood and Guts to crown our first AEW Champion and Tony Khan's got a special surprise for us. And here we go then, we're underway with our first match of the evening. Joey Janela goes one-on-one -on -one against Jimmy Havoc in an Extreme Rules match. And this is our way of announcing that in the pre-show of AEW's Blood and Guts coming up for you later on this week. We are going to see a six-man elimination hardcore match to crown our first ever AEW Hardcore Champion. And that match is going to be a invitational, so anybody can turn up if they fancy it. Um, of course, these two guys, Joey Janela and Jimmy Havoc, have already thrown their name into the ring, which leaves four more spaces available for that match. It'll be interesting to see who does turn up and who thinks they have a shot at going for the Hardcore Championship. And because that's on the pre-show, that's officially going to be the only championship in play for a small period of time. Of course, on the main card of Blood and Guts, we're going to crown our first Tag Team Champions as well as our first AEW Champion as well. So it's going to be a very, very busy night at Blood and Guts. But it'd be interesting to see who walks away Hardcore Champion. We do have some very interesting names that could get involved in that. And these two are just a couple of those guys. What do you want? So my cat's meowing at me. I don't know what she wants. Nice reverse suplex there by Joey Janela. Into the pin. Remember, this is extreme rules, so no disqualifications, no count outs. Pinfalls must take place inside the ring, though. At the moment, both these guys staying quite clean in this one. Nice by Joey Janela taking down Havoc once again. I mean, look at the rankings at the moment. Jimmy Havoc's had one match and got one victory. Whereas Joey Janela, where are you, Joey? Joey. Joey Janela, I can't even see him on the rankings. Where is he? Is he in the middle? Is he in the top? He is. Okay, so at the moment, both these guys are on plus one. We have uh, Havoc with one win from one, and Janela. Oh, I remember now. Janela's had two matches. Uh, he's lost one, and then he won a triple threat, didn't he, against Darby Allen and Angelico? Yeah. Oh, and an episode of Dark, I think, a few weeks back. So that was interesting. So both these guys were pretty good momentum, really. I mean, quite a few of the hardcore wrestlers have got good momentum. I mean, you've got Luther quite high up in the rankings as well. Of course, he won a triple threat at the Fighter Fest uh, pre-show. So he's looking pretty good as well. So it'll be interesting to see who actually does turn up and fight for that belt. I would imagine Luffy would be someone who uh, would be strongly considering that. Janela now stalking Jimmy Havoc on the outside. Has him hooked, looking... Ooh, okay. I think he was looking for a package power drive, but Havoc able to pop all the way up to the top and go for the old um, didgeridoo. Harakurana now into the Death Valley driver, rolls it through and Havoc deadlifting him back up into a second Death Valley driver as well. So of course tonight we've got um, four matches for you. Uh, this one of course. Next up after this we're going to have the other tag team semi-final between the Dark Order and Best Friends. The winners will go on to face off against... Oh nice double foot stomp there by Jimmy Havoc. Yeah, the winners of Dark Order and Best Friends will go to Blood and Guts to face off against the Hybrid 2 to become the first tag team champions. Also, Luchasaurus goes one-on-one -on -one with Brody Lee for a place in the Elimination Chamber. And then our main event will see John Moxley in action uh, against someone, I don't even know who it is myself at this point in time. Tony Khan has promised us a big surprise. Um, and we'll see exactly who Tony Khan has planned up for us as... Janela now rolling through Jimmy Havoc. One. Only a one count. Going to take more than that. Janela now bringing Havoc back up to his feet. Oh, big super kick there by Janela on Havoc. There's the pin. One. Two. And oh. 
Woo! That was really close, but Janela now stalking the ground of Jimmy Havoc. There's the boot in the gut, and now Janela hooking the arms. And once again into that package, power driver. Janela in with the pin. Referee so slow to get down as always. Two and three. And Joe Janela does pick up the victory here tonight against Jimmy Havoc on Dynamite. And uh, that's some good momentum for him to take into that match. Of course, at Blood and Guts to fight for the Hardcore Championship. Be interested to see who else turns up in that match as well. So that does drop Jimmy Havoc back down to a zero, giving him his first loss of this universe mode. And it also pushes Janela up a little bit as well. Boom. Yeah, so that match at Blood and Guts, of course, is going to be a six-man elimination hardcore match. And as always, you will get a point for every elimination you cause. So there's a good chance for someone to get a lot of points in that match, actually. Should be a very interesting match. Right. Janela does well here in his first match on Dynamite. Let's move on to the tag division. And here we go then, tag team semi-final action. The winner of this one will go on to face off against the Hybrid 2 at Blood and Guts to become our first AEW tag team champions. It could be a great night here, you know, for the Dark Order. I mean, you've got Uno and Stu Grayson in this match. Uh, they can be moving on to Blood and Guts to fight for the tag team championships. Then you've got, after this, Brody Lee having a chance to fight for a place in the Elimination Chamber to become the first AEW champion as well. So it could be a massive night of blood and guts for the Dark Order. And if there's one thing they would love, that is a hell of a lot of gold. That would really enforce their message um, as the Dark Order, I suppose. Really enforce their dark, deep cult-like uh, actions. At the moment, the Dark Order are doing pretty well. I mean, at the moment, they are top of the tag team rankings uh, with two victories from two alongside the hybrid two. Uh, currently, best friends are sat in the middle of the rankings on zero because they've had one loss and one victory. Of course, that victory was the match that got them in to this semi-final. But the Dark Order are looking very good. I mean, it would make if the Dark Order won this, at least then we'd have the two top-ranked teams fighting for the championships. Which has surprised me a little bit, but the Young Bucks has been a little bit iffy here and there. I mean, the Lucha Brothers have uh, had one win from one match, but of course they've not really been involved in this tournament because they've been obviously fighting for places inside the Elimination Chamber instead. But I think as time goes on, there's a few more tag teams we'll see a lot more of. And Best Friends is now getting some control in this match. I mean, there's still a few tag teams we're yet to even see. Um, what is... Ooh, what have I done here? Um, where are we? We're going to see Reynolds and Silver um, in their first match as the Dark Order on Dark this week. Also on Dark this week, we'll see Sammy Guevara, we'll see Hangman Page in action as well. And we'll also see a main event of Seema versus Christopher Daniels, which is going to be a cracking match, that one. As Grace in their big takedown... Big knee strike, there's the pin, but Chucky T's there to break it up. French Chantry now by Chucky T on Grayson. A boot in the back of the leg of Grayson as well. As Uno now, oh wow. Dropping Trent with that uh, brutal brain buster. And there's that flipping backbreaker by Evil Uno on Trent. In to... No, Trent breaking free from that suplex. Uno caught him though, now up onto the shoulders. Going to drop him neck first across that top rope. Of course, a place of blood and guts up for grabs here. Chucky T now with the awful waffle. There's the pin. One, 
two, but Uno's there to break it up. And now Uno taking, oh, tre uh, Chuck up, slams him down, one. What? Only a one count after that. Chucky T no selling evil Uno there. Chucky with a big clothesline taking Uno down. Uno Mas. And now you see Trent with the crunchy. There's the pin. And both Trent and Uno saw what the other one was up to and both broke what they were up to to break the other one up. So that didn't really work out too well. But Chuck now taking Uno up into the awful waffle as well. There's the pin. Surely this will be enough. No, Uno kicked out. Wow. Great resilience shown by evil Uno here of the Dark Order. But it's best friends who are in charge at this point in time. Trent now stalking Stu Grayson. Springboards over the top of Chuck Taylor and Uno, but Grayson saw him coming, just slapped him out of midair. Another leg breaker by Stu Grayson. Nice jaw breaker there by Trent, and then big clothesline taking Grayson down. Strong right hand before now twisting the arm, and oh, Grayson catching that stiff forearm. Front chance, and all of a sudden the Dark Order are the ones in control. Grayson raining down with the right and left on the grounded Trent now into the cross arm bar. Big close in the corner there by Uno. And now follows up with a second. And now into the sidewalk slam on Chucky T as well. Brings Chuck back up to his feet. There's a boot in the gut. Into that flipping backbreaker. But Chucky no sells. Chucky's back up. Chuck Taylor now taking Uno up. Uno's fighting back. I don't know why Chuck Taylor was even considering a powerbomb on Uno. Uno's a big lad. Nice springboard dropkick there by Trent. On Grayson now goes into the pin. Uno's down. This could be the chance for best friends. No. Grayson once again kicking out. So our best friends might live to regret not taking these chances though. But Trent dropping Grayson with a crunchy. And surely that will be enough. There's the pin. One, two, and three. And best friends are going on to face off against the Hybrid 2 at uh, Blood and Guts to become the first AEW Tag Team Champions. Let me put that into my uh, match card so I don't forget. And I also, of course, update the rankings as well. Trent picks up a win. Chuck Taylor also picks up a win. Where is Chuck Taylor? Chucky. Here, yeah, Chucky, Chucky, Chucky. I've lost Chuck Taylor in the rankings. I know he's in there somewhere. Uh, but yeah, great victory here for Best Friends. They, like I said, will move on to Blood and Guts to fight off against the Hybrid 2 to become the first tag team champions. It's weird because it's not two teams I would have thought would have been in that final match, to be honest. But you get what you earn, I suppose. And here we go then, a place inside the Elimination Chamber up for grabs here between two big men in this roster. We have got Brody Lee and we have got Luchasaurus. This should be a very interesting one. This is probably going to be Brody's first difficult match, I think, so far. I think he has won a couple of jobbing matches. I think this is Brody's first proper match here. And it'll be interesting to see whether he has the ability to topple the big man Luchasaurus. Luchasaurus trying to catch Brody with some big assaults there, but Brody managed to avoid them all. Now, front chancery on Luchasaurus pushes him out the way, but Luchasaurus now catching Brody in that snap suplex. Luchasaurus now bringing Brody back up to a standing base and dumps him to the outside. Evil Uno is still at ringside for this one. 
Brody. Oh, big slap by Brody into the face of Luchasaurus. Now throwing him across the outside. Three. I'm a massive fan of Brody Lee in case no one noticed. Um, I have made this very apparent over the last few years of doing these universe modes. Um, and I want to see him do well. I really do. And I'd love to see him inside this chamber. But I can say the game is the game. It does what it wants to do. Um, the Dark Order didn't do very well in the tag team division tonight. So let's see how well they do here in the singles division. As Brody just sending Luchasaurus into the ring steps. Not quite sure what's going to happen here if this ends up as a draw. Um, as Brody slides back into the ring. And you see, oh wow. Okay, Brody Lee... Uh, has locked out here. He's done exactly what Dustin Rhodes did a few weeks ago. But it's a win. That's all that matters, I suppose. It wasn't the most prettiest way of doing it. But Brody fought off Luchasaurus on the outside of the ring until the nine count. Then got himself back in the ring. And Brody Lee goes on to the elimination chamber. I mean, it was uh, not the most thrilling victory. Let's say that a count out victory is not exactly... The best win you could possibly ask for, but Brody picks up his third victory of this universe mode. Luchasaurus, his second loss. And uh, yeah, Brody gets himself into that elimination chamber, showing, of course, Evil Uno on the outside exactly what you need to do to get yourself into a championship match. Right. Now, talk of the championship match. Let's move on to our main event. We're going to have John Moxley against the surprise that Mr. Tony Khan has put together for us. Let's see what that is. Wow, Tony Khan was not lying when he said he was going to surprise us all with something big here tonight. And wow, Moxley really uh, G'd up by this one. Of course, we have got Miro here in AEW. Of course, formerly known as Rusev over in WWE, making his AEW debut here. It's going to be a pretty cracking investment, I think, to AEW. And really looking forward to seeing how this one's going to pan out. But Mox has uh, really been aggressive early on. But Miro now with that big clothesline. Of course, Mox currently uh, looking pretty good in the rankings with two wins out of two. This, of course, being Miro's debut. So we can't really uh, judge him too much. Miro now. Oh, big overhand on uh, Moxley. Went for the uh, head, but Moxley and Miro caught him. Miro now springing Moxley off the side. And then looking for that spinning heel kick, Moxley able to just about avoid it. And then catching Miro with that big clothesline. Moxley now brings Miro back up to his feet. But Miro catching Moxley with a big uppercut. Another strong right hand. Rolling Moxley through with a big boot into the spine as well. And now Miro just pulling back at the chin of John Moxley. Moxley struggling here as Miro just really wrenching back, just slowing the pace of this match down, keeping Moxley grounded, which I think is the best thing for him to do. It didn't work out very long, did it, really, as Moxley grounds and pounds at Miro. Big elbow in the face there by Miro on Mox. Now, oh, stiff right hand by Moxley on Miro as well now. Before springing him off that far side. Of course, one of these two guys will be the sixth and final entrant inside the Elimination Chamber for Blood and Guts. We already know it's going to be Hangman Page. It's going to be Pac. It's going to be Matt Hardy. It's going to be Lance Archer, Brody Lee, and the winner of this one. But I'm also uh, planning out a pretty good um, other match as well involving four other big names. Uh... As well as, of course, Cody versus Dustin one-on-one -on -one at Blood and Guts. We're also going to see the team of MJF, EC3 and Wardlow again as a trio. We've got the Hardcore Championship match, of course, as well. And another very interesting match for Blood and Guts. We've discussed this before. Sean Spears 
has discussed with Tully Blanchard that he's not happy with Butcher and Blade. They have not ended up being the uh, the strong sort of enforcers that Sean Spears needed. So uh, he's requested that Tully goes out and finds someone better. And we're going to find out who that's going to be at Blood and Guts as well. Pin here by Moxley. One, two. Oh, only a two count. But Moxley almost securing his place inside that chamber. Mox now stalking Miro. Has him caught. Paradigm shift by John Moxley on Miro. There's the pin. One, two. And free and John Moxley is going on to the elimination chamber. Uh, Miro will have himself an opportunity to showcase what he can do as well at Blood and Guts. We'll discuss that a little bit later on. But at the moment, Blood and Guts is looking like a pretty amazing card. We've got some very interesting matches and we now know that chamber will be Hangman Page, Pac, Matt Hardy, Lance Archer, Brody Lee and John Moxley all fighting it out to become the very first AEW champion. It's going to be an absolutely amazing show, that one, I think. Uh, and we're going to crown our first hardcore champion, first tag team champion as well. Uh, let's make sure we get the ranking sorted. Moxley gets up to a three. And Miro gets a minus one after his first match. It's a very difficult first match to have, though, isn't it, for Miro? So we can't exactly moan too much on his behalf. But uh, I'm sure he'll still be able to have a very successful career here in AEW. Uh, he started off with possibly one of the hardest matches you can get. Uh, but I'm sure Miro has a fantastic future in AEW. But anyway, that is the end of our episode of Dynamite. I hope you have enjoyed. Of course, if you have, slap the like button. Of course, subscribe if you would like to see some more as well. I've been Shabby Gamer. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you in a few days' time for our final episode of AEW Dark before... We get to blood and guts.